it's gonna just like not work then we just won't use it okay I think it's working okay so now we got YouTube on board too and it wouldn't turn off the other night that was so crazy so I just didn't even get the other nights uploaded but today is a new day every day is new God brings us new mercies and blessings every day and we are thankful all right well, let's uh, jump into some prayer God we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do I just pray that you would continue to heal Josie's body and that she would just feel stronger and stronger every day God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We pray for them to see where they are, your sons and daughters that have uh, strayed away. We pray that they would return and that they would uh, repent. God, and that uh, you would reconcile the relationship that they once had with you. God, we just see all the, all the disasters going on all over the world, God. We've got fires. We've got floods. There's earthquakes, God. I just pray that you would be with these people, that you would meet their needs, that uh, people would come alongside them, and that they would see the hands and feet of Jesus and that they would see the love and compassion of Jesus and through through the help that they receive that they would be drawn to you God we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones we just pray for peace comfort and strength for them God we pray for the schools as they start back next week we just pray for a good new school year of 2021 to 2022 we pray for um, the students to stay well to stay well and the teachers and the administrators God we just pray that this would be a good year for them and God we just thank you and praise you for all the things that you do in our lives for protection and provision that you created us God that you called us that you chose us that you cherish us God all those things you think of us you treasure us and in Jesus name we pray amen okay well I am doing okay Josie I'm kind of tired too but we're going to see if I can get this done I may not be on here for very long alright I want to read what I shared yesterday on uh, Facebook about this song this is an old song I really like it it's one of my favorites it's called thy word by Amy Grant and so this song and message is one of my all-time favorites by Amy Grant I love the lyrics of the song of this song the B-I-B-L-E God's holy word is our instruction booklet for life and according to Greg Glory are basic instructions before leaving earth if we want to stay on the path of the plan and purpose that God has for us we must read his word it is full of so much knowledge that we need to help us navigate this life this way this was one of my verses yesterday and it reminded me of this song God's word is a love letter to each and every one of us it is a book of great sacrifice and power that is unimaginable, a glimpse of our eternal home also. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21 call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today all right well I don't know whether y'all know this song or not but I really like it I was gonna look up the lyrics but I did not get that done 
As a matter of fact, when I came in here this afternoon, I thought, well, this computer is going to do the same thing that it did last night. But God shared with me, maybe last night was not the right night. Maybe tonight is the right night. Maybe whoever needs this message about his word is here tonight and was not here last night. So this also had something to do with my daily quiet time yesterday, my Jesus Always by Sarah Young. So I'm going to read it to you because I thought that it went pretty well with this song too. When planning and problems are preoccupying your mind, turn to me and whisper my name. Let the light of my presence shine on you as you rejoice in my unfailing love. Thank me for watching over you always and loving you eternally. Affirm your trust in me. Express your devotion to me. Then ask me to illuminate the way forward, helping you sort out what needs to be done today and what does not. Deal with problems as you must, but refuse to let worry or fear become central in your thoughts. Keep returning your focus to me as often as you can and I will light up your perspective. Saturate your mind and heart with scripture, reading it, studying it, and memorizing verses that are especially helpful to you. My word is a lamp to your feet and a light for your path. If you follow these guidelines, your preoccupation with planning and problems will diminish. This leaves room in your life for more of me. Delight in the joy of my presence. So I thought that was really good, especially the part about saturate your mind and heart with scripture, reading it, studying it, and memorizing verses that are especially helpful to you. My word is a lamp unto your feet and a light for your, it says for your path, but um, in the Bible it says, in King James it says unto your path. So that's kind of what I have memorized is that version. So let's look up some scriptures that talk about God's Word. And I have my study Bible tonight. It's so heavy. It's so heavy. So let's go to Psalm 119.11. Psalm 119 is so long. I have read all of it before. Okay, I'm going to start with 10. I really like that. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. So that is really good. So I think I'm going to read something extra that's in my in my Bible that I didn't know I was going to read, but I guess I am. I guess I'm being led to read this. It says, Attributes of God. He is truth. And I may not read all of it, but I'm going to read some of it. Every word God speaks is true. And that's in John 17:17. 17, 17. He is unable to speak untruth. Hebrews 6, 17 and 18. And he is never mistaken. Deuteronomy 32, 4. He knows all things as they really are and sees what has happened, is happening, and will happen. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Since he is responsible for everything, all accurate knowledge comes from him. He is the standard for all truth. He is that by which all else is measured. Truth not only describes what he knows, it also describes all he does and says, including judgment, Isaiah 16.5, creation, Psalms 146.6, redemption, Psalms 
31.5 in, in each detail of every promise he makes. Joshua 23.14 Truth is so identified with God that Jesus simply states, I am the truth. John 14.6 identifying himself as the only way to the understanding of genuine truth, 1 John 5.20. The fact that God is truth is the basis of faith because the opposite of having faith in God is calling God a liar, Romans 3.4. He is not only dependably accurate, but he is also accurately dependable. And then there's just a whole list of um, verses. And you know what? We may do this tomorrow. We may look up all these verses. But I already have verses set aside. I just happened to see that. That's one thing that I love about this study Bible. It is a John MacArthur Women's Study Bible. It's called the Women's Study Bible. I think it's John MacArthur. Anyway, I love this Bible. It's a little bit heavy, but I love it. It has a lot of stuff in it. It has a lot of extra stuff. Okay, so the next verse that we're going to go to is Psalm 119, 105. And again, we're talking about God's Word. And so this is the, this is one of the verses that this song that I shared is about. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the freewill offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. So a lot of, as I look at 119, a lot of this is about God's word and um, don't know who wrote it who wrote 119 meditations it's called meditations on the excellencies of God's word so we may expand on this tomorrow and we may read all of Psalm 119 but not tonight We will continue on tonight to Proverbs 35, 30 verse 5, Proverbs 30 verse 5. I guess my camera's working. I don't know. My poor computer. I need another computer is what I need. This one has been really good. I've had it for three or four years. It's been a good one, but they just kind of get full of stuff at after a while. Okay, so um, Proverbs 30 verse 5, every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who trust their trust, who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Two things I request of you, Deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Do not malign a servant to his master, lest he curse you and you be found guilty. Okay, well this is... Proverbs, and Proverbs sometimes is pretty hard to understand, and then sometimes it's a very easy to understand, 
So I'm going to stop there because that's what I wanted to read is every word of God is pure. He is the shield to those who put their trust in him. So that was kind of the main thing that I wanted to get out of there. So let's move to John in the New Testament. John 1.1. 1, 1. I'm thinking that my writing... No, they're about the same. I started to say... I don't know, that might be a little bit bigger. I think the font in this Bible is just a tiny bit smaller from that one. Okay, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Okay, and then it starts talking about John, John the Baptist. So we're not going to go into that. I wanted to read that about God's Word is what I wanted to read. Okay. So let's move on to John 17, 17. And we could talk about God's Word all night. I forgot that Psalm 119 was all about God's Word. We might talk about it again tomorrow night, too. And then, I don't know, the message may be something else tomorrow night. I don't know. I never know. Okay. John 17, 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. So God's word is truth. And I just realized something about this Bible as opposed to this Bible, I think. Isn't that crazy? I never have them out at the same time. But there's no red writing in my study Bible. I don't like that. Because that was Jesus talking. Yeah, that was Jesus talking. But I don't have any red I don't have any red letters in this Bible. Maybe I do prefer that one. I like that. I like the red letters where Jesus is talking. Okay, so let's move on to Hebrews. Never really compared my two Bibles. I have, I have other Bibles too. These are not the only two that I have. These are maybe the only two that I use. Hebrews 1, 3. Hebrews 1, 3 says... Uh, Okay, I'm just going to start at 1-1. One, one. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand um, of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, and he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. 
Okay. I think that's all I want to read on that. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. You know, the word of God is truth. So if you're trying to figure out what something is is true, see how it lines up with the Word of God. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, if you're listening to someone who is preaching to you and he is not preaching out of the Bible, then his words are not lining up with God's Word. So always, always only listen to people that preach, out of, preach and teach out of the Bible. And we are very blessed at our church because everyone does. We don't have these college professors in our church that just come up with these messages that have nothing to do with the Word of God. We need to be, this needs to be our instructions. We need to be reading it. We need to be studying it. We need, we need this every day. It's like um, as important as food and water we need this every day in the days that I don't have a chance to read the Bible or some of the worst days <laughs> that I've had my days go so much better when I get my quiet time reading God's Word before I start my day I need that and I need coffee and uh, I need the word more, but I need the coffee too so I can understand the word. Okay, so this says the enduring word. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. Now this is First Peter one twenty three, but I'm starting in 22. Through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren love one another fervently with a pure heart having been born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever because all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as of the flower of the grass the grass withers and its flower falls away but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. So the word of the Lord lives forever. And it is more important than things that are fleeting. I might use this Bible more often. I don't like that it doesn't have the red part, but I like the extra study parts in it. Alright, well that concludes all the scriptures that I wanted to read and like I said I'm sure there are more. I may do this again tomorrow night on the Word of God. I just felt really compelled to share some of these scriptures and to, to share what God had shared with me and like on Wednesday night we talked about this too at youth about the fact that not only is the Bible true, but it's backed up by history, and it's backed up by archaeology. So, anyway, that was a good lesson on Wednesday night, too. I think I'm going to do this. I really, tomorrow, I think I'm going to clean my desk off, because I'm just really getting tired of this mess here. I've been, I've been working on trying to learn I'll show you what I've been trying to do. 
Okay. I have to do a 44 slide presentation against human trafficking on keeping students safe. And so I've been studying on this and uh, I have like 10 pages of notes plus I have the slides too. But anyway, that's what I did last week and uh, I have to do this presentation for the lady that's training me, I think next week. I'm thinking, I don't know when, I haven't decided. But anyway, my desk is a mess because I'm like, I have my personal bill stuff, I have this stuff that I do at night, and I have the unbound stuff too. So I really, really need to clean up my desk. And I'll show you. Well, on one camera you can see my mess with my Bibles and my stack of stuff. Okay, so let's do this tonight. Let's do the E-band. And uh, I have the E-band right here. So if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, then listen to this. This is kind of a presentation. I guess these are presentations too, but I don't have to memorize them. Okay, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, Romans 1.16. So gold represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So the dark, the dark question mark. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. The first question mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? Well, there is only one way, and that is through Jesus Christ. And that's what the red stands for. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And that's John 3.16. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. We don't have to be. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash, oh, wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10 9. So this question mark is asking have you accepted Jesus Jesus's gift of forgiveness by believing in him? And if you haven't repeat this prayer after me. God thank you for loving me I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead.
I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So then the green color, the green represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. And then this emblem is read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. And we talked about that tonight. We talked about how important the word of God is. And how important it is in our lives. Oh, covered up the little praying guy. Sorry, little praying guy. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. And then we have the, the water. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person like being born all over again. And then we have the fellowship. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. And then we have the world with the cross. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So if you said this prayer tonight and you got saved, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, His Son. Okay, well it is time to pray again. I have a visitor that came in that wants to be fed. He hasn't told me he wants to be fed, but I pretty much know that he does. And so let's pray again. Josie, do you have any prayer requests? I know a lot of people are sick right now. So we want to remember them. We want to remember God's healing. Um, I have like chronic back problems now. And they make me not, I'm not able to sleep real well at night. But compared to a lot of things that people live with, I'm not going to complain. I mean, I do complain. I ask God to heal me. But I'm not going to complain too much because there are people out there that live with a whole lot worse pain every day with no let up okay you need me to pray for a friend okay I can do that anything else glad my friend Josie was able to come and uh, learn with me tonight about God's Word. I miss her when she's not here, but she gets busy sometimes. Okay. Prayers for everyone. Okay. We will pray for everyone. There are a lot of people to pray for. And a lot of things to pray for. I mean, look at our country. It's a bit of a mess. Um, we need to be that one nation under God again. Uh, liberty and justice for all. 
Mm. You know, God gave us the freedoms that a lot mm -hmm. of times we take for granted. So we need to be thankful for the freedoms that we have. There are many countries that do not have the freedoms that we have. And they are in the streets protesting. So we need to be thankful we were able to go to church today and worship with no one interfering. To learn more about God's word without anyone interfering. Um, we need to be thankful. Those are things that until last year we kind of took for granted. And then when everything got shut down. I think we saw the importance of that one-on-one um, -on -one fellowship. Okay. Anything else? Oh. Because I got to get off of here. I got to get Seth fed. And get this Bible because it's already. Yeah. It is already. Yeah. Already marked for the blessing. Okay. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's go to God and pray. Let's thank God for His Word, His instructions to us. God, we just come to you and we thank you for your Word, your Holy Word, God. Help us to reverence your Word. Help us to want to learn more and more every day to just be in your Word, to be studying to be learning, to be sharing with others. Help us not to take this important love letter that you sent us for granted. Help us to realize how important it is to our lives, that we need it. We need it just like we need food and water. We need your word. And we need to hide your word in our hearts because we may not always have, physically have your word and we need to have some word hidden in our hearts so that we can find it in our time of need. God, we just praise you for all the many wonderful things that you've done for this beautiful day that you gave us today. God, I thank you that Josie is feeling better, but I pray that you will continue to heal her body, that you will continue to heal Mr. Mike's body, that you will protect... Um, others that they would stay well God we just pray for everyone God we pray for all of Josie's family for her brothers and sisters and their families for her children and grandchildren God we pray for blessings and we pray for protection of this disease that has decided to go rampant again God we just pray for protection for them we pray for provisions God we pray that you would just help us to find who needs um, the hands and feet of Jesus, who needs the loving compassion of Jesus. God, we just pray for my family. I thank you that my family uh, was able to go to Galveston and able to get back to safely, God. I just praise you for the time that they had away from their home to make some family memories and just to do something different for a change, God. I just uh, pray that you would continue to protect us, God, and to provide for us. And we thank you for all the blessings, God, that you have given us. We thank you for Jesus that loves us so much that he died for us, God, that he laid down his life for us to offer us an eternal home and an eternal life, God, that we cannot even imagine. We started studying Revelation in Sunday school today, God, and I know that it's going to be a great study, and I hope they don't skip too much of it because all of Revelation is so important. God, just help us to understand what we are learning. And God, just bless us with a good day tomorrow. And bless us with uh, the good things that you have for us, God. We just uh, we just praise you and thank you again, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Yeah, I did pray for your family. And prayed for everyone. And God, please help our country. Help our country to repent of their sins, God. 
want to uh, come back to you, God, to humble ourselves before you in prayer, God, so that you will heal our land. Help our country to put you first, God, where you belong. And help there to be a Jesus movement that no one can stop in our country and all over the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, and and God, I'm sorry I forgot about Josie's friend. I don't I don't know her. I don't know her circumstance. But God, we read tonight that you know all of us. And we know from Psalm 139 that you knew us before we were in our mother's womb. So God, just please uh, heal her friend or be with her friend. Meet her needs, whatever they are, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. And be with her friend's family too. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sorry, did I get everything? <laughs> P.S. God. P.S. <laughs> P.S. God, I forgot something else. Oh my, I think I'm sleepy. <laughs> and I had so much coffee today that I couldn't really have any more this afternoon and be able to sleep tonight. But okay, well it is time to give all of you God's blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. We all need some peace. This country, this world needs some peace. We need some guidance. We need some direction from God. And it comes in his word. So every day, get this word out. Whether you read a lot or whether you read a little, put some of that word in your heart and hide it. Hide it in case one day we don't have these. It could come to a day where we don't have these anymore. That's happened before. It's happened in history. We need to be thankful and be able to read it while we can. Alright. Well, all of you have an awesome rest of your evening and awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing tomorrow, but I'll figure it out tomorrow may depend on how much my back hurts in the morning. Oh, oh. So much, much love oh. and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night. Have a great night, Josie. I love you. Um. Good night. <laughs>